Let's talk about Venus once again, with the main focus of this video being Venusian geology. And I guess more specifically, we're going to try to tackle one simple question, or I guess one difficult question. Why is Venus this way and the Earth that way? despite so many similarities between our planets. Or I guess in other words, what actually happened to Venus back in the days for this planet to become so extremely hot, extremely pressurized, and basically the definition of hell, whereas Earth turned out to be habitable, eventually giving rise to us. And although the simplest answer to this question would have to do something with the plate tectonics, or the ability for Earth to basically recirculate a lot of materials trapping CO2 and releasing other gases in the process, something that Venus clearly does not have. In one of the recent studies, the scientists actually discovered something somewhat unexpected. Turns out, back in the days, possibly 3 to 4 billion years ago, Venusian geology potentially was super similar to Earth and possibly even contained signs of a kind of a beginning of plate tectonics as well, and specifically something we refer to as cratons. And so let's discuss this along with some of the other discoveries in this video, focusing on some of the recent discoveries in regards to Venusian geology. But also first, let's briefly go through some of the recent discoveries that did actually surprise the scientists just a little bit. As you might have seen in one of the recent videos in the description, once again the scientists have actually confirmed that there seem to be signs of unusual gases in the Venusian atmosphere, including phosphine and ammonia, that on Earth is usually linked to life. And so right now there is a very high chance that there is maybe something going on in the Venusian atmosphere and that something could be life after all. But I guess a much more exciting discovery from just a few months ago was the official confirmation based on the comparison of various images from the Magellan probe that was orbiting Venus several decades ago and some of the recent observations from several missions. Although one of these missions, the Japanese Akatsuki, that helped us discover so much about Venus in the last few years, has been potentially cancelled now because JAXA, the Japanese agency, has unfortunately lost all contact with it back in April of 2024. But that's just a side note. The point is that, over the years, scientists have been able to collect a lot of data about Venus and in the process discovered that it actually seems to be still volcanically active. There seem to be at least 42 different volcanic eruptions per year, with many of them lasting for at least 3 years. Which was of course a really big surprise and reminds us that we don't really understand this planet very well. Because previously, for many years, a lot of scientists were convinced that Venus is no longer active and all of the volcanoes we see on the surface are essentially ancient. And as a result of many of these discoveries, many scientists wanted to focus on Venusian geology just a little bit more. And in the most recent study, the one you can find in the description, Fabio Capitanio and his team in essence were able to confirm a somewhat old proposition. Back in the days, billions of years ago, Venus potentially could have actually had plate tectonics as well, or at least had extremely similar geology to planet Earth compared to what it has now. But something went wrong, or basically something went right for planet Earth. And so at some point, the two planets diverged becoming entirely different. But I guess let's discuss the details because here it does get kind of exciting and somewhat interesting. And it's something to do with these super ancient formations that we have here on Earth and they're known as Kratons, from the Greek Kratos, which means strength. And here on Earth we have approximately 35 different Kratons located in various places but usually representing an ancient and very stable part of various continents that are much more dynamic and much more mobile. In essence, these cratons are basically these huge rocky formations or these very enormous inclusions that are very often the oldest part of the continent and have not been deformed almost at all in the last few billions of years. As a matter of fact, they seem to be the strongest parts of the continent and potentially serve as a kind of an anchor or as a kind of a foundation for the actual continent to develop from. So for example, the cratons you see right here are over 3 billion years old and form some of the oldest geological structures on the entire planet. And most of them seem to have survived a lot of continental interaction, various types of collisions and various types of geological activities, but even more importantly, very often have relatively deep roots extending hundreds of kilometers 
into the planet's mantle, which is basically why I call them anchors. And though some of them are a little bit younger, quite a lot of them are over 2.5 billion years old, and many potentially existed since the early formation of the planet. Here's at least one simulation that shows us how they potentially formed. That green stuff you see on top, that's the hard continental shelf that eventually coalesces into these relatively large cratons. It's actually something that seems to be the result of the convection inside the planet, which naturally is responsible for a lot of other motion, including plate tectonics themselves. But they seem to form only because the continental crust is actually kind of weak and can easily break, then combining into much larger structures like you see in the simulation. But compared to the rest of the continental crust, cratons seem to be just a little bit stronger. In essence, you can think of them as the strongest part of the entire continental crust. And so on early Earth, when most of the surface was still just one large chunk, some kind of an initial collapse first led to the formation of cratons around which the continents grew afterwards. And so in other words, what you see right here is the beginning of the early plate tectonics. This is the main reason why our planet has not actually become similar to Venus and is able to recirculate everything, including carbon dioxide. Or essentially, this is how it all began. And for many years, it was believed that this was possibly unique to planet Earth. I mean, obviously, we know plate tectonics seem to be unique to Earth, and by extension, these cratons were also believed to be kind of unique. But that's not what was discovered in this recent study. And here, the focus was on unusual formations on Venus known as Tessera, with the main focus being the area you see right there that seems to be slightly elevated. This is known as Ishtar Terra, and compared to the rest of the Venus, it's an extremely elevated region that was very geologically active in the past. On Venus, this is one of three large highlands, and it's essentially the biggest. Here's roughly what it looks like if zoomed in, and to some extent it kind of resembles Himalayas. But we know that on Earth, Himalayas, for example, were actually the result of continental collisions. Yet somehow Ishtar Terra appears to be somewhat similar. And so clearly something very strange was going on here, because this unusual thick crust is just a little bit too similar to what we find on Earth, very often around cratons. And so the researchers in this paper did discover geological similarities, including things like volcanoes, mountains, and various types of plains, with even at least one mountain, Maxwell Mont, that seems to be a chain that's very very similar to Mount Everest. Here it's 8.8 .8 kilometers in height compared to 11 kilometers for Everest. This is actually what you're looking at right here. And because of the geology visible here, and because of this very complex terrain, by creating various types of models, researchers were able to recreate this, assuming that Venus also went through very similar geological activity just like planet Earth, specifically suggesting that Ishtar Terra was very likely formed just like a typical craton on Earth or in other words, possibly something like this. Now when it comes to cratons, their actual formation is still kind of highly debated and it's not clear if they actually formed this way or in some other way, but this right here is one of the best explanations. But the main implication here is that both planets very likely had extremely similar processes for the first billion years, with many similar formations on Venus extremely likely formed just like other cratons. And so here, by having these rising plumes of molten rock inside the Venusian mantle, they eventually resulted in a kind of a buildup of layers right on top of the planet. But unlike Earth, for some reason, that's where it stopped for Venus. Basically, Venus just stopped at cratons and did not start to develop continents and, more importantly, plate tectonics. And so here, the surface of Venus, for some reason, solidified as is, with the plate tectonics never starting. In other words, both planets started pretty much the same, but Earth possibly had some other ingredient that Venus did not. And so right now it's actually not entirely clear what factor played the most role in preventing Venus from developing plate tectonics, or I guess more importantly, in allowing Earth to develop and to become the way it is today. And so the initial geological mechanism was very similar or possibly the same, but over time Earth diverged and became different. And here we can obviously speculate about what exactly it was, but there is really no answer just yet. In this paper, scientists suggest that maybe it was basically just a problem with timing, maybe Venus took a little bit too long or developed this too quickly, 
but it could also be other factors like for example the fact that Earth has a relatively large moon. And we know that the moon creates a very large tidal stress on the surface, which maybe allowed these cratons to then develop into continents. Or maybe it was a temperature difference. Venus, even back then, was just a little bit hotter than Earth because it was always closer to the Sun. And so the actual reasons are currently unknown. But what is now clear is that the overall geological processes in the first billion years were possibly super similar. And that's of course good news for discovering some kind of an exoplanet out there that might be somewhat similar to Earth. But the good news is that in the next few years, we're going to have new missions to Venus that will definitely help us understand all of this so much better. You can learn more about these missions in one of the videos in the description, but they're definitely going to be teaching us so much. And I guess somewhat unrelated, or maybe somewhat related to this, in one of the recent studies that you can also find in the description, Researchers actually were able to develop a somewhat intriguing material based on ferroelectric aluminum scandium nitride that in theory allows us to produce semiconductors that can actually work in ridiculous conditions, including Venusian temperatures. And that means that, in theory, we could actually make some kind of a, I guess, robot or a rover that could now go to Venus and not melt. Now this is just a brand new discovery, so we don't really know where this goes just yet, but we discussed previous discoveries kind of similar to this in the video in the description as well. Anyway, on that note, once we learn something else about Venus or its origins, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.